Cool, man. All right. So give us a second. Uh, people are starting to file in right now. You guys that are jumping in right now. If you want to guys ask any questions, we have the uh, director, we have the producer right here of the Canary movie. You guys can tell me where you're from if you have any questions. And I'm going to ask you guys a few questions. Uh, first, can you introduce the movie to our audience here? Sure. So uh, I'm Carl Herman, and I wrote and directed The Canary. Uh, the Canary is a short film about a gold miner during the California gold rush in the 1850s who uh, decides to buy a mine. And, uh, things may not go so well for him. The, the premise of the film was really to explore that idea of anxiety that you feel when an idea may have gone awry, and really wanted to get into the sort of the gritty real-life experience of what gold miners in that time period really would have, would have gone through. Now, you wrote it. How did, uh, how did gold mining strike a chord with you become an inspiration? Yeah, I think that, you know, we see a lot of people in the sort of the tech world today uh, sort of experiencing a new gold rush, as it were. And I wanted to sort of play with that idea of like the people that don't succeed, that you know everyone kind of gets foolhardy and they believe in manifest destiny and move out to California. Uh, but what happens when you don't? Uh, and and do you have sort of the, uh, the ability to see that you maybe should pull the plug and move back and sort of explore this idea of the guys who are the losers in, a, in the moment of a gold rush? Because uh, I feel like it's an export territory. Usually, we look at always look at the winners of these kinds of booms and busts. Uh, where did you guys shoot? What was your location like? So we shot uh, three days here in Los Angeles, uh, yeah. and one day up in Northern California in an actual state park called Bodie. Uh, Bodie was an authentic gold mining town uh, in the 1850s. Uh, I think it stayed one until about 1920, uh, and we were lucky enough to be able to work with the California State Park System to, uh, to film there. Was terrific from a production perspective. It was a dream to have that scale of a, of a set to play with uh, for something, you know, a short film. So it, uh, it, was, it was a great experience. You guys that are just joining us, uh, so you guys are watching right now, The Canary Project is the movie that, the, that you guys made. Uh, if you guys have any questions for the director, the producer here, at the Holly Shorts Film Festival in Hollywood, California, you guys can tell us where you're from. Um, how do you, this is like live. This is live right now. Um, I thought, was, I thought it was just going to be like, thank you uh, <laughs> for all the input, and then saunter on off. But, uh, saunter and beat it. Yeah. How'd you get involved in this movie? Uh, well, I don't know if I forget, actually. I think some you work with Noah. I, was work, I, I work with uh, yeah. Noah Rosenthal. I work at Whitewater Films, and Noah works a lot with us as a director of photography. And Noah had put us in touch. He was like, hey, I think you should produce this. And uh, and I love the script and was like, what can I do to help? And it's pretty much from there, we just kind of ran with it and put the pieces in motion to make it happen. It was a collaboration between my company, which is called Pioneer Pictures, and then Bert, Bert's company that he works uh, with is called Whitewater Films. And between those two production companies and uh, our DP, Noah Rosenthal, we were able to sort of assemble the critical pieces. One, one, Noah was, he's not here tonight, but he was honestly one of the most critical assets we had on this film. His, his expertise behind the camera was, was a big piece of how this movie got made. And, he's also uh, a producer. He's on also a producer on the project as well. So we were really, really fortunate. We worked with Panavision Hollywood as well. Um, we shot on the Ari Alexa, and uh, they were they were just a terrific partner for us as well. How'd you like that camera? <laughs> oh, it's not to like. It's a it's a beautiful machine. So we, we had a lot of uh, low lighting in this film, a lot of action sequences that take place inside of a mine. So when we were looking at cameras, a big part of the decision factor is what can actually capture a lot of movement in that level of lighting. Um, so the, when it came down to it, it was like the Alexa was probably... Yeah, we did a lot of... We did, we did a couple of tests, and we were like, oh, this is probably going to suit us the best. So. We did you shoot, also did you shoot any with the Alexa minis? No, I haven't shot with those. The new ones that it came up with? No, but we did shoot a little bit with the Blackmagic uh, 4K. Um, again, great camera, terrific color control. But when it came to that low level of lighting, we just felt like the sharpness of the image was, was not as, as great on the Blackmagic as it was on the Alexa. So that was a big piece of our decision. If I can ask you about your uh, your actors, you know, where do you find them? Um, why do you select them? Uh, well, uh, Matt O'Leary, uh, I had worked with on a film called Back in Rules of World. Um, he's a great physical actor, and we had talked about potentially using him as, uh, as a war bill. Um, we met with Matt, and then we were like, yeah, yeah, 
I mean, I think from the get-go, Matt really got sort of the impetus and the sort of the emotional arc of this character. Um, you know, it's a young guy trying to make good with his sort of lifelong dream of getting it rich. And I think, you know, as a young actor, you can kind of recognize that. It's like you work and work and work, and some days it probably feels like you're going into the heart of darkness. You're just mining a tunnel, and you're never sure if you're going to find gold. So I think he really connected to that kind of pursuit of greatness uh, in this role. And then, like Kurt was saying, his physical acting, like, I, I I haven't directed anything before, but I've watched a lot of actors, like, as a producer, and I've got to say, like, Matt's such a pro. Like, I could cut to him anytime I needed to in, in post. His, his, just te his technical skills are amazing. And he just gave us some amazing emotional performances as well. The other two actors we worked with uh, was Samantha Barks. Um, I say, uh, you look like Clark Kent. They're saying I look like Clark Kent? Yeah, like, they're going across. Clark Kent, Superman. It's true. It's true. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm not, yeah. It's actually, he actually is Superman. But our, our, so our other two actors, uh, we worked with Samantha Barks. Samantha uh, came by way of a friend. Uh, she's a terrific actress. She was in uh, Le, Le Miserable before this film. And, you know, I think this was, uh, it was just kind of a, a lightning in a bottle moment. Like, she happened to be in L.A. She normally lives in London. And I really was looking for someone who was from England actually because of the time period of the film. I wanted I wanted someone who had a bit of like uh, that, that sort of immigrant authenticity if it were because that's a time period in America where a lot of people hadn't you know they, they were there was a first generation coming over from England in that time period. So I liked that she brought that. And then the third actor we worked with was Ronnie Clark who played Lemuel and I, it was just yeah and it's on yeah it was just an open cast awesome. Um, and it was like the, the second that we saw him we knew he was the guy, um, and I was, you know, on the day, he was just a constant professional, and really brought this character what to life. What was the, uh, what was the, the coolest part of, of putting this short together? I want to step out. Okay. I think, honestly, oh, he's the, out. the coolest part, I mean, besides working, I, I, I feel really lucky. I, I assembled a crew via my line producer and Bert, um, who I've been able to now use on future projects, and I think that was one of the coolest things about this project is for me as a director it, it brought that sort of catalyst crew for me as, a, for my, as my career continues now so meeting all these people for the first time and getting to have a working relationship with them was, was amazing but then in addition to that I think shooting in Bodhi taking advantage of the locations that we have here in California um, you know especially with as much production as, as moving out of state for tax credits like it goes overlooked what we have here just in, within driving distance of Los Angeles um, and being able to take advantage of, that, of the state park in Bodhi was just amazing. I mean, to be actually among authentic gold rush ha cabins and buildings and homes to really shop this was, I think it was a very unique opportunity uh, given, you know, we don't really have that many historic uh, sites here in California. Let me ask you, for the people that are, that are watching right now, mm -hmm. can you give us contact information where they can find out more about the movie? For sure. Uh, websites, whatever you might have. For sure. So you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the Canary Movie, uh, and then if you follow us on uh, on Facebook, it's it's also at the Canary Movie or the Canary Movie. Um, and then uh, we'll be you know we'll be releasing the film publicly after it concludes its festival runs, probably sometime in December on Vimeo. Um, so those are those. And then in terms of 